Let it fly. Take one. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Let It Fly podcast. My name is Tin Gumboa. Everybody, introduce yourselves. Gabe Norwood. Jared Dillinger. <laughs> Saul Mercado. <laughs> and as promised, we do have Mr. Joe DeVance in the house. Joe, say hi. Hey, what's up everybody? What's up? Joe, by the way, is the star of today's episode. Just in case there are people who are living under a rock, uh, Joe is a legend in the PBA. Uh, how many seasons did you play in the PBA for, Joe? I believe 16, 17. 16. No, no, you, you lose mm -hmm. count after like 12 or something like that, you know? <laughs> You just stop counting after 12. That sounds like, like Saul's age. Yeah. <laughs> They're 32. Saul's 32 same after that. 32. <laughs> okay, Joe, I'm going to give you the floor, but I'm going to let you tell your story. Um, how do you want to start it? All right, well, I mean, we can start off with the obvious. Um, just my playing, my playing career. Uh, drafted with Wellcoat. Um, had... It was a, it started off rocky. Uh, I remember uh, before my first game, I twisted my ankle really, really bad. And that kind of, for me at least, that kind of set the tone for that, for that year. Um, there'll be games that I didn't play. There'll be games I started and you know, all that good stuff of, you know, the ups and downs of, of being a rookie. Um, on top of that, um, the franchise player and myself, we were the same position. I mean, at least they they put me as the five, even though, you know, I, I, I could have done way more than just play the five. But, you know, it is what it is. That's that's how that's how they saw me as as the center. And so that that first year was a little rough. Um, and I remember asking for uh, a trade at the end of that year. And thankfully, uh, Coach Tim, everybody knows Coach Tim, of course, right? Um, he took the chance in, in making some trades and uh, got me to, to Alaska. Um, and, you know, I, I, I would like to hope that people that followed my journey, they, they knew that I really started my career at Alaska. That's where I kind of blossomed uh, from the first, from the very first time I set foot on there, you could tell that their culture was totally different than my previous team. Um, and, and not to take any, you know, like not to take anything away from, from Wellcoat, which was Saul and Gabe's team. Right, so they they saw how fun it was uh, even after I left. Um, I mean, it was I had the funnest the funnest time that year, my my rookie year. Like it was, besides the 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 playing and all that. Um, I mean, we we had a losing record, but we had fun losing. <laughs> I mean, as it, as as bad as that sounds, it was. We were so close. We were so close. Saw knows. I think Gabe knows too, because they would. They would. They used to go to our practice. Yeah, we used to show and, up. Because never mind. Yeah. Go ahead. This is your story. <laughs> no, I mean, okay. No, really. So, no. I have to tell you, no, someone's honestly. been calling cap on your story <laughs> since a few minutes ago. Yeah. Saul, is there something you want to say? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, go ahead, please. <laughs> no, nah, I, I just think it was a little, little caperoni and cheese on your pizza. <laughs> Um, when you, Which part? I mean, he said he said that he asked for a trade and Coach Tim traded for him. Uh -huh. I don't think that's what happened. What's your version? What happened was I got. <laughs> okay, this isn't your I version. Got drafted. This is what happened. Okay. This is what happened. I got drafted. Okay. They wanted me and Gabe to be teammates because they wanted us to be the next Fast and Furious. You know what I'm saying? The next duo. Mm -hmm. So they were like, "How do we get him? How do we get them on the same team? Trade the number one pick." 
previous the big goofy guy. So that's how it happened. <laughs> the big goofy guy. <laughs> they traded they traded Joe three first round picks and somebody else for me. I mean, like that's that's what happened. Like Joe was that the exact breakdown right there? <laughs> I think it was like Joe uh, three look. future first round picks, another whatever. Uh, and cash whole considerations lot of, and everything just to get him, a yeah, whole lot get of him milk. off the team. Yeah. A whole lot of milk. So, yeah. Joe, what do you say to that? Clearly, you could tell that's a fabrication. <laughs> <laughs> fabrication? <laughs> He's been waiting to use fabrication. <laughs> <laughs> Where you learn that? Where you learn that word from, bro? <laughs> we, need a fact, we need a fact check that people could clearly look that up, so they know I'm not lying. Okay. Look, you know what? Who, okay, I'm gonna take I Gabe's think it word. Was maybe like Gabe five lie. of them. It was like five of them that got <laughs> traded for me. <laughs> but, but to Saul's credit, but to Saul's credit, he really. It, it was his first time in the league, so you know they didn't really know what he was. You know, because I, I tell you what, Saul came forward. into the league <laughs> like straight, <laughs> straight kill mode. Yeah. Saul came into the league straight, straight kill mode. So I give him that. Mm -hmm. But. Before before he proved himself, he did get traded along with four other people with, for me. So I just want to throw that out. Nah, there. nah. I mean, I mean, no cap. That right. it was. It, I think it was a trade that worked out for both for both sides. You yeah, know, I, yeah, I got drafted it by it Alaska out. Aces, it who already had L.A. Tenorio, mm -hmm. Willie yeah. Miller. They yeah. just kind of drafted me because it was like get the best talent available at that at that spot. Coach Tim even told me like we had no idea that you even be here at this mm -hmm. spot. Right. So. I think it w it just worked out for both. Um, you know, it, I think it was the first yeah. time in history of PBA they traded the first uh, draft pick the previous year, mm -hmm. like right after. So, but I mean, yeah, it, it yeah. worked out. It did. I mean, I, yeah, it did. But it did. No, it worked out perfect because there, there there wouldn't have been no fire and ice. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, and right, there, for sure. There, there wouldn't yeah. have been no Joe Devance at Alaska. So I mean, it, yeah. It worked but out but we always talk about this, Joe. Imagine if they didn't trade you. Yeah. And they traded, I mean, let's say J.R. Reyes and kept you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How crazy would that the have been? The three of you? That would have been That, that would have been, been crazy. <laughs> and you, got, you guys have to also remember Rob Wainwright was still on that team, yeah, too, yeah. who was a clown in himself. So, yeah, that, that's probably a blessing that it didn't happen. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have got anything done. Oh, my for God. sure. Who knows what, yeah, who knows sure. what would have happened? Who, yeah, like... <laughs> Only God knows, guys. <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> hey, but Joe, uh, are you going to talk about like your whole career? Because we, we really so just want. For that. We just really, me and Je, uh, JD are falling asleep a little bit. I forgot how JD's voice sounded like. <laughs> He's oddly silent. But okay, go ahead. I'm just listening, you guys. I'm happy to be a part of this no, second so, episode. And, I just and want to listen and be a good that's, listener. That's correct. Um, so me and me and Coach Tim, we built we built a, a wonderful a wonderful relationship throughout throughout our years. I love Coach Tim to death. He is my he's he was like my father figure out there. Taught me everything. How even how I am to this day. I saw JD. I mean, all you guys know, right? Like he's molded me to be how I am, right? So people don't understand, right? They see how me and Coach Tim ended up like, you know, having this great relationship and all that, but people forgot what it took to get there, right? Remind so, us, remind I mean, us. It, yeah, I mean, it, it took, we, we called it special timeouts. So I probably, probably led the team in special timeouts where uh, t timeout coaches meeting me at half court, you know, yelling and spitting in my face and doing all this <laughs> and, and same thing at practice, like yeah, so intense, in right? But again, it took all of that and all right, you know, I, I probably deserved it, you know, but again, it took all of that to get to a beautiful relationship, to a, to a, a, men, a mentorship. Uh, I felt like I was an extension of Coach Tim on, on the court. I mean, there'll be times where I'm, I'm, I'm helping with practice. He's let, he's let me lead practice. He's... And there'll be times where I'm sitting on the bench and he's yelling at me, Joe, go talk to him type, you know? So, I mean, I was, I was literally an extension of Coach Tim. I mean, after X amount of weeks that Joe was not there at yeah. our team, he would voice his, his emotions that he just kept saying to the group, to the coaches, to the team, like, I can't believe Joe's not here. 
Yeah. This is, I just feel awful. I don't know. There's a big empty space right now. I just, I can't believe he's not here. And that went on for weeks. You know, it went on for weeks, man. And it was weird. It, it was, it took time, it took time to get over. Um, so he was, I know he was struggling. I saw it with my own eyes. Right. So 12 championships later, uh, Flex. Crazy. Quick, subtle flex. Damn. <laughs> yeah, you play this long as you like you know what I'm saying? Light, light, light work, 12. You know what I mean? 12 championships later on our How many you stop, one. How many until you stop counting championships? <laughs> how many until you, yeah, you, say you stop you know counting? What? I was going to stop. I was going to stop at 12. I didn't think 12 was going to be my last one. Mm. You know what I mean? And I'm sure you guys can attest to this. How I live my life is a... Is, uh, all right, so now I, I just got to move on. I got to move on. I'm not, I'm not going to dwell on the past. Yeah, soak in it. Because I've had some okay. crazy, yeah, right? I'm not just going to soak, sit there, and, and but I, I'm not going to cry. I did. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I did. There was nights where I sit down by myself and cry. And I, I mean, you know, I'm not even telling Monica. I, there was, I remember taking flights by myself, and I'm hearing this song. There's, certain, there's a certain song that that always hit me. Uh, what as it was, I'm not sure the band name, but it's as Harry it Styles. Was. Yeah. It's Harry Styles. Yeah, you Harry, know, Styles. It's Styles. Not, <laughs> Harry Styles. Oh my gosh, that that song, to be honest, is still gets me feeling a certain type of way right now. But the the words. How does it go? How does it go again? It's not <laughs> just the same as it was. I'm sorry, I, I don't know the song. Can you can you? I, how does it go? I don't know the song. What is it? How does it go? As it was. You know it's not the same. Yeah, we gotta have the music playing when he does it. Yeah, we had it. Like, yeah, yeah, we gotta get that. Going. So the only words yeah, you know in that whole song is "as it was." I get. You know it's not it was, the same yeah. as it was. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah you, you, go. you don't know no That's other it, words. <laughs> yeah, I mean when they sing it, then I know the words. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Monica, we we talk about that now. Like I didn't get that opportunity to to say goodbye to my brothers that. I battled with for years, right. won, won the championships for years, to, to, to even say bye and, and say thank you to, to, to San Miguel Corporation, to Alaska, to the PBA. They blessed me with so many things. I never would have thought in a million years I would have had the career that I've had uh, to meet the people that I've met to build the relationships with all you guys and, and, and the fans that adored us, that appreciated our hard work, but not just me, even my kids. And I mean, that the Philippines was all they knew, guys. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Born all your kids raised born, yeah. in Yo, the Philippines. I just wanted to jump in. I, I don't want to cut you off, but at the same time, I'm happy you touched on it. Um, when you spoke about your family and, and that aspect of it, because a lot of people just see the basketball, right? Oh, mm -hmm. your basketball career is over. Yeah. But you touched on it so perfectly where it's the way it went down for you put you in a spot where it's not just you selfishly thinking of your career. You're thinking, what's my wife going to think? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My yeah. kids, you know, all our, our kids are best of friends. You know what I mean? To, yeah. to, to yeah. pick up and, and put those relationships on pause without any say, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think it becomes bigger than a basketball thing. You know what I mean? These are relationships that you build no, on a no, personal sure. level. Yes, this is life. Um, teammates mm -hmm. that, you know, you're going to birthday parties, you're going to weddings. We go, like, there's so much everything bigger than the game of basketball. And I think that's important on why you're, you're telling your side of the story in, in terms of not just, you know, okay, that part is done, but it's also like the emotional kind of attachments that you had mm -hmm. To the relationships that you built, you know what I mean. I, I think that's yeah. really. I, I want to even see me, even me, and point. all you guys. What's crazy is you guys know and and are closer to my kids than my than my own family, right? You, than my blood family. You know what I'm saying. You guys have spent more time with my kids and with me and Monica than my own family, than my wife's own family. I mean, me and me and JD talked almost every every day <laughs> you know what I mean so he I, I would ask how they're doing like what's the mentality of the of the boys right now I mean I, I still it was crazy because I still felt like I was on the team you know and yeah waking up at I'm 3 a.m. to watch the games yeah 
I mean, yeah, I'm staying up super late days. watching the game. Yeah, thinking. exactly. It was about my brothers that that I fought with. It, the coaches, I loved all the coach, the, the whole coaching staff, the ball boys. Like, I was literally close with every single one of them. You know what I mean? But again, at the same time, you know, things happen for a reason. Um, who knows? Like JD knows. I, again, all you guys know how bad my knees were, and I probably would have still tried to play till the. I mean, the wheels were off already, so I, I don't know what else I could ride it to. You, you know what I mean? Hey, but, Joe, you guys um, have no idea what he yeah. was doing behind the curtains just to, to just to. Just make, to make it, it to practice. practice. Yeah, for make sure. It to, like, through, just home. that's another rabbit hole we're yeah, going down man. with. Like the sacrifice yeah. Joe would put himself through. And we all did it. We all put, you know, we all sacrificed, but y'all have no idea what yeah. he would do oh, just yeah, to sure. make it through these games and practices and still do it with a smile on his face. Right. And he's not complaining about yeah. nothing. Nothing, man. Can but, we can we hear a little bit I'm about still... about what Joe did? Um, I, I have tears in my eyes. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a fun story. To, oh my god! I, I, I let Joe. You yeah. can, you can say it, my yeah, man. Yeah, just in terms yeah. of like your routine, like, like your the routine, things what towards you the took, end of your career. You, you know what I'm saying? Magic yeah, pills, yeah. Whatever. I mean, there was uh, just for one instance, my, uh, my, uh, what's that called? Plantar fasciitis. My plant, my plantar fascia mm -hmm. ripped mm -hmm. during during a game, and. Not even a week later, I can't. There was a series where I couldn't even walk. Yeah, right. I remember this? And I, yeah, you guys remember. And I'm asking the doctor, Doc, can I still? Will it get worse? Can I play? They was like, Well, I mean, you could play. It's gonna hurt. I was like, All right. Well, can you take the pain out? Like I, you know, I'll do anything. And I'm sure most of the people listening might remember when I was taking, there shots. was a playoff series where I took maybe like 16 to 18 shots in my foot, just, just so I could play in the, in the semifinals to the finals. I took about 16 shots in my foot. Uh, some before the game, well, every, every game I had to take it, and then some during halftime. And then the next day, come to practice, I'm in a boot, I can't walk. Um, and that's just one, that's just one instance, you know? And, and the, the, the countless painkillers, I mean, I progressed from, from, the, from the regular Advil to the Aloxan. Remember Aloxan? I don't, I don't even mm -hmm. know if that's still yeah. around. Advil, <laughs> Aloxan. <laughs> to cataflam, to arcoxia, to something even better that I still take right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so JD knows. Is that marijuana? You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> it's legal where he is. You can say it in Cali. Is that marijuana or what? You can say it here. <laughs> no, I mean, for you guys don't know, like just those last couple years, Joe had like a cocktail that he'd be taking yeah, where yeah. it would be like glucosamine, collagen, pre-workout, uh, painkillers, anything, just to keep that anything, motor just started, to, just to get by. or for games that yeah. he might not even play in, but he's still yeah, he's, ready. he's preparing, he's prepared, ready, always prepared, ready, prepared, ready to go. Steroids, even if he's gonna get two minutes. Yep. He's steroids, <laughs> steroids. You take steroids. <laughs> I, did, I did everything, <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and uh, to be honest, and. At practice, I still made it a point to where I'm, I need to be the first one yeah. in the gym. So the first one I there. was the first one in the yep. gym, still Thanks. doing my stretching, still doing my shooting every day. Yeah. Thanks. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I still had that same mentality throughout my whole career. After every surgery, every injury, I try to come back as soon as I can. Most of the time, most of the time, way too early. You know, and my wife's mad at me, like, Joe, why are you doing this to yourself? I got to, sweetie. I got to. They need me. I got to do this to win. Like, I, I, I had that mentality of my teammates need me, my teammates' family needs me. The co Everybody that was affiliated with the team, they need me to play, right? So I, again, I took, I did everything I could to, to come back from my injuries early, to, and that was just the mindset that, that I had throughout my whole career. And I, I still think that it paid off, even though it, it ended how it ended. 
I, it was worth I it. wouldn't do anything. Yeah. yeah, I would do it all over again. I wouldn't. Wa- I wouldn't want my kids to do that, though. There's no way I would allow my kids to to live like that. But for me, it was the best for me and my family, for my teammates' family, and um, again, I, I wouldn't take it back. And and again. I want to say thank you to San Miguel Corporation, to Mr. Ong, to Boss Al, uh, even my uh, the other team managers and from Pure Foods Alaska, and and Rainer Shine. Like they they blessed me with, with you know with a lot of stuff that I just would not have happened. It, it wouldn't have happened if if I wouldn't have went out there and played in the PBA. Um, so I'm truly, truly thankful for all of that. Every, every last thing. To be honest, I'm, I'm thankful for, for how it Joe, ended. Joe, let me ask you this, though, because everybody knows you are the life of the All-Star game. Oh, yeah. So I'm guessing if you had a farewell, you were going to have one more All-Star game performance. Like, what was the go-to song? Ooh, what were you going to be know. dancing to? At the at your last All Star game, whoop that trick! I, I, see, <laughs> I, it would it, it would be either two not songs, Harry Styles, either po- <laughs> no 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 not Harry Styles, either Pony Genuine because you know <laughs> I <laughs> get down with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's either that it was either that or the one that kind of put me on the map. Uh, what was the last one? Boy by Rihanna. Rude Boy by Rihanna. Yeah, dog. You know what I'm saying? Dog. Hey, hey, can you give us, can you give us like a little bit of a sample? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, we, we have what, to see it. Yeah, you know, a little bit of something. It'd have been like, hey, hey. Is that for hey, both songs? That's for either song? Hey, hey, yeah, Rude Boy. <laughs> hey, cute music. Come on, bro. That's for either song. That was for either that song. That's for Pony Audrey. Hell yeah. Oh, Show you like, what you take to do that. Uh, now you, you still go. popping pills over there? You can move. Yeah, yeah. Hey, they been signed normal. this boy. <laughs> wait, hey, if y'all wait, if you'd have asked me that and I knew you was, I would have warmed up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say you were given the opportunity in your last game. You know, someone gave you a mic. You were, you know, in front of the TV five camera, mm, the signal Kobe, camera. Kobe what moment. would you have said? Like, final uh, buzzer of your very last game, who would you have thanked? The floor is yours. And cry if you can. Just do it. It'll, it'll <laughs> be good right, for me. So, it'll look, this is what uh, you guys are putting me on the spot, but um, I got my mic right here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> <out> this letter. <laughs> He was like, I wasn't prepared for this, no. and he pulled his letter out <laughs> his jacket. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this, guys, but <laughs> giving me my flowers, my flowers in my hoodie. Um, <laughs> I mean, I probably shoot. What would I have said, guys? Um, wow, who would have who would have thought, guys? Sixteen beautiful years, twelve championships, uh, countless. Endless, beautiful moments, heartbreak, everything in between. I never would have thought in a million years that I would have been blessed to have the life that I've had to share with you, to have a beautiful family, four beautiful kids born and raised here. Um, I never would have thought, guys. And, And to have this moment to say goodbye to all of you to say how much I appreciate all of you guys means everything to me. Um, This here is my final goodbye. Thank you, and I love you guys. Joe out. out. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, hey, Joe. Hey, that was good, that was good. Joe, Joe, come back real quick. Joe, Joe, come back real that quick. That was good. That was good. Jay. Hey, Joe. Joe, good. let me. Oh, I, I, you before you exit the court, I want to grab okay, the okay. mic real quick. Okay. I'm gonna grab the mic Go real quick. Go grab it, Saul. Because I want to give you your flowers, bro. I knew, you knew it was coming. Joe. I want to oh, give you your man. flowers, dog. You knew like, it was coming, Joe. Just like the ones on your chest. And <laughs> and I want you Maybe to know. Y'all. And I'm apologize to Gabe in advance. But. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to thank you for the best years of my career, bro, being next to you. I respect that. Like, the championships we won together, the sacrifice we made, the fights that we had, bro. Um, like, I really feel like me and you are always, like, 
we're the best duo on the court. Like, people can't score on us yeah. in pick and roll situations. Me and you were always synced up. We always knew where each other were on the court. It was it was crazy, our chemistry, bro. And it all started from us being together off the court. And I really think that's important. And the, the time that we yeah. spent together off the court, um, you're an amazing leader on the court, but an amazing father and husband and leader off the court to your kids, to your wife, to your friends. Um, man, I'm just blessed to, to be able to be a part of your career, your legendary career, and to have helped you win um, some of your 12 championships, bro. Like, um, you helped me a little bit. But I helped you win your twelve, some of your twelve championships. <laughs> but yeah, you um, did, you did, you did. I love you, bro. Enjoy retirement. Um, make sure you run off this court because you're gonna have a lot of pictures. And I'm a bodyguard you. Let's go. One, two, three. Let's go. <laughs> go, go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you, Saul. Uh, nah, that, I guess that means a lot, dog. I, I, I'm gonna go ahead and piggyback on that too, Joe, man. Um, just coming into the league, Saul, myself, Jared. Uh, we all came in the year after you. And to really watch your career as we competed against you, man, you went from this transition, like transformational. I feel like every team was trying to find a Joe DeVance, the way you started your career. You know, on both ends of the court, you were scoring the ball, making others look better, but all the time with a smile on your face. And I think that's something that you see in younger generations that might not even know it just from watching you play. So I, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate your, your friendship. Um, looking forward to seeing you here soon, and and I'm extremely happy that you're given this opportunity to to speak your mind, to to have your send off, and yeah. and I pray that myself and Jared each uh, get an opportunity that that you spoke about to kind of give back just off of what you you've shared with us today. So I appreciate you, man. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, JD. Hey. <laughs> I you don't want to do it. These are you don't guys. Do it. I don't like doing this stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Joe, I've always, I, I've gave you enough flowers so on so many occasions. But it's just very yeah, fitting yeah. that we're here in this moment, and you shared a lot of good energy, and you shared some memorable stories, and just your whole career. And you know, you're. I think everyone can agree with me. Joe is a generational type of mm -hmm. yeah. talent. And not even that, but also a person. Yeah. 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 Guys like Joe don't come around very often. And it's we're not here to just give you flowers. These are facts. We've we've been around enough in the game and in life to see people. And you truly are one of a kind, my man. The the way you project yourself to others as being a service to others. You think about everyone but yourself yeah. first. Yeah. And that's very hard to come by. And a lot of people can act like they do, but you really walk the walk. And I, I try my best to carry my life on how you would carry your life. Like you really do inspire me in so many ways. You know, I've told you that before. And I really am grateful to have a friendship with you and with these guys. And I'm very appreciative and grateful for that. And I love you and I can't wait to see you again. And, um, you're just, uh, just a special guy, man. I, I love you so much, man. The legacy that you left, speaking as a fan, mm. irreplaceable. Right. You are a true legend. Yeah. Don't cry, dog. Don't I, know cry, face. I know that yeah. face. Yeah. I know that face. Let's cut. We gotta cut. I know that face. We gotta cut. That's that all face. for this episode of Let It Fly. <laughs> like, He's subscribe, and tune in next week. Like, cry. Here we go. Here we go. Are you okay, Joe? Are you okay? Lower lip clip, right? Yeah. Yeah. Lower lip clip. Lips getting at, bigger. At all, like, sorry. I've, I've always, you know, I never looked for credit. Like it didn't, that didn't, it didn't matter to me. I was just happy that, that all the teams that I was a part of, like we was happy, we was one. I was spreading joy. You know, like that was my mission. Like that's still my mission in life. I want to spread joy and happiness you know through how i live and just to hear you guys say that man is uh it, it really does mean a lot to me and and i don't want to sell uh i don't want to sell my wife short either guys because to be honest she was really the she's always been the motivation always from from day one i've always felt like i wanted to make her happy. I've always felt that I wanted to
to give her, she has no needs at all. Like she has no wants, no needs. She just, it was just about me and her. She wanted to be happy. But that, that was one of the things that I, it just drove me to give her the best life possible. And she was there with me through, through thick, through super thick guys. Y'all you, have no idea, so, through super thick and thin. And I would have, there was no way I would have had that career without her. So she was truly the backbone of myself. And I, you know, she's, she's actually right here behind the, yeah, the she made the most, she, she made the most sacrifice, bro. Yeah. Like, honestly, that yeah, ass, no, like she made the most sacrifice. That's a whole, that really sacrifice did. that you so make. Too. Yeah. That sacrifice that you make on the court for, for each other. Like that started at home from, with your wife. Like, yeah, I, 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 yeah, no, totally for sure. she you. set the tone. She set the tone, yeah. and, yeah, and it sure. was, yeah. and, and and even the whole family dynamics. How you see how we are, right, as a unit. Um, I learned that from her family. My family's small. It was my dad, my mom, and my sister, and me, and that was it. But coming into her family, she has eight, ten aunts and uncles. They got ten kids themselves. So, and they were all close and that, I saw that and I'm like, wow, that th it was a beautiful feeling. So yeah. that was something that I wanted to take to the Philippines and with you guys. And, and, and just like I said, you guys know my family more than my own blood knows my family. You know what I mean? So you guys are our family. I truly, truly cherish the relationship that I have with all of you guys there. You guys know how much I love you. Um, and I, I thank you guys for all the battles, uh, for all the love, the, the family gatherings, absolutely everything, man. You guys mean everything to me. So thank you. Hey, Joe, you know what I always say? I always say that all the, all the big guys that come in that are like half black, <laughs> like you kind of look joke. yeah they always look up to you bro yeah. like they always like i yeah. want to be like yeah. like this dude. Like, can like, you please please tell that funny ass story of, of sitting of sitting <laughs> Ray, bro when he like when he was all raider shine at that time in the bubble, in the bubble. <laughs> and he like you were like his ultimate idol since he was a kid <laughs> oh, let, let me hear let me hear bro. no 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 please oh. share that please share that story no. game set it up I was on game the court game set it up <laughs> I was on the court I was on the court so oh already we're gosh. already in the bubble we're already in the bubble Sydney, I, I don't know if it was his rookie year, second year. He was young. Like, he was super Dude. new in the league. And he'd already expressed, like, you know what I mean? He's a fan of Joe's, everything like that. But Sydney, if you ever played against him, he's very aggressive, assertive, especially at this time he's trying to earn minutes. He's super eager. Mm -hmm. So we're playing the Nevra, and I, I'll let Joe pick it up from there. But, Joe, <laughs> what, what happened? Oh, How'd it go down? All right. So, all right. So for number one, I wasn't really playing that much. So I had to really find a reason to get going, right? Like I just worked myself up. And and Sydney, how he plays, just like with Gabe, he was out throwing his body, doing all this and flopping. And you know, Sydney's a big dude. Yeah. So right away, I'm like, oh, I'm about to go at this fool. I'm about to go at him. So I mean, the very first play, I'm going, I'm talking so much trash. You cannot guard me. Oh, weak ass. Yeah, you, you, you know, like, oh, my God. And then, I, you know, luckily I got, like, the best of them. Um, and I, but to be honest, I felt so bad after. Because so then they're like, oh, wow, Joe. He, uh, you were his idol. He looked so up you, to you, you so didn't much. Know. He had no idea. He had no idea. He had no idea. Oh, my God. You know how they I say never no meet your I was idols? Like, oh, my <laughs> gosh. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. He's probably said, watching I, right I now I if I he still likes you. <laughs> Do you want to say something to him? No, they were teammates. They were teammates. But I think you did message him. I think you did message him in the bubble. I think you messaged yeah, him. Yeah, I messaged him. I'm like, Sydney, I'm so sorry <laughs> that you are sorry 
and I had to beast you really quick. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. I, no, no, I just said, no, I'm just playing. I said, you know what, Sydney, I'm sorry, man. I just had to work myself up. You know, nothing personal. You're a great player. Psych. Yeah, I seen and that. I said, Psych. I, I, I seen the story of, I don't know if you guys seen it, KG and Joe Kim Noah. Did you see that? Similar no. story, right? There's a story of, yeah, Joe Kim Noah looked up to KG. And they're at the free throw line, oh, yeah. and he says something to KG like that that you know he respects him or he something like that, and him. KG just barked at him like shut the fuck up like <laughs> like yeah. I'm finna eat your ass. <laughs> as soon as I as soon as I heard that, I was like yo there's a joke. <laughs> so after that happened, after that happened, I was like Joe, just assume. Like Every half black Filipino kid that's big, just assume that they look yeah, up to you. Like just, yeah, just yeah, be nice yeah. to them. Oh my gosh. All them. Horrible. I really did. <laughs> I felt so bad. I as, even yeah. uh after, like when I retired, I, I, I would ask JD, like, how's Sydney doing? How's Sydney yeah. doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. So oh, yeah. I mean I, I I was root I'm rooting for him still. You know what I mean? I don't mm. I'm not sure if he's on the team or not. But. He's on the team. He's on the team right now. He's playing in the summer league. Yeah, Besides him losing all his confidence, he signed. <laughs> he signed. He signed. Yep, he's there. He's there. He's still, he's still, he's rumor has it he still oh, cries okay, at night about that he's first still there. Come on. powder you guys had. Come on, Sydney, you can do it. Rumor Sydney, has it he threw a party it, <laughs> when he retired. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, this episode is four hours long. Right. <laughs> this is two parts. This two this episodes. Episode, yeah, yeah, we got a lot of we got a lot of content. Yeah. It was a bit much. Enough. But it was know. a beautiful conversation. Yeah, I was. feel super blessed to have witnessed it. Joe, thank you so much for sharing your story. Before we close things out, is there anything else you want to get off your chest? Yeah, uh, I didn't. I, I I didn't really get to to say thank you to Coach Tim, Coach Richard, Coach Kirk, Coach Freddie, Coach Olson. Um, those guys. I, I ended my career with those guys. Th those those guys were absolutely. Awesome. I had endless conversations with Coach Richard, with Coach uh, Kirk. I mean, I, I looked up to, to Coach Kirk. I mean, you guys saw knows, JD knows, like Coach Kirk was, I, honestly, Coach Kirk doesn't get enough credit um, for what he's done with, uh, with and for Hinebra. Um, but again, I, I mean, I love all those guys. Thank you to, to Boss Al, uh, Mr. Ong, thank you. Um, even to all my previous teams, I want to thank you guys. The PBA, truly, truly blessed. Thank you. Um, and uh, I'll see you guys hopefully soon. Mm -hmm. Hey, shout out, shout out Coach Kirk, man. That's the best basketball mind mm -hmm. I've ever been around in my life. Mm -hmm. Ever. He best still, basketball mind. He still talks like, about you. That's, that's my guy, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had me, he still talks me, about you, me, him, and Joe. Oh my gosh, we have endless it. memories of, of us oh, being man. together. Like, talks about it still. Oh, oh, man. Man. That endless. guy right there is amazing. Thank you guys, yeah. all of oh, you, big, for sharing your out. stories. Thank you, big Joe, for sharing the, your story. Yeah, go ahead. Big shout yes. out to the fans. Okay. I, I, I was going to say that message to your fans, to the Hinebra fans. I'm sure they all miss you so much. Yeah, no, honestly. You, the fans have been amazing throughout my whole career, my whole career. Now, if if I would have spoke a little bit more to Galog, I'm pretty sure I would have been in the millions of followers. Not that that's important, <laughs> but uh, I mean, it would have been nice though. You know, why don't I mean? you speak to Galog, Joe? Yes. <laughs> I know County Long, huh? <laughs> I know County Long, huh? Long, huh? <laughs> 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 you know, but again, you the the not just the Hinebra fans, but all the Philippine basketball fans in general is absolutely amazing. The country loves basketball. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank hey, you what's your favorite much, Tagalog Joe? saying? I only you in your episode. Your favorite you Tagalog, Tagalog so saying. <laughs> okay, favorite My Tagalog favorite saying. Tagalog when saying we, when we were trying to learn Tagalog. You guys ain't got so much, huh? No, 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 dog. The word that you were like, this is a word? Nakaka? Oh, you were like, Nakaka? Nakaka. <laughs> that, yo, hey, no, true story. True story. I was learning Tagalog, and I stopped after this because there's no way this is a real word. Nakaka. No way. What time it's not Nakaka, a word. I'm done. Nakaka is not a word. It's I'm part done. of a word. It's like, like a prefix. Nakaka 
Yeah, what was the word? Not, it was probably the tongue no twister there. For me. <laughs> not in the cat. Yeah, it was the tongue twister. Yeah, it was the tongue twister. Yeah, it was the tongue twister. It's a tongue Look twister. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> he was like, Nakaka. He's like, that's a word, Nakaka? <laughs> like, poop? Right, Nakaka? <laughs> I was so walked out. That was his last day. Take a shit. He was like, oh, I'm done with this language. Stupid. Nakaka intende. Nung Tagalog. Huh? Huh? Okay. Um, I speak for all fans when I say thank you for sharing so much of yourself with, with all of us. Uh, thank you for making the Philippines your true home for so many years. Um, thank you for all your sacrifices. We all had so much fun. Watching you on the court and all of your off-court antics as well. And uh, you guys, let's give Joe his flowers. Why don't you comment your favorite Joe memory? Yes, yes. How much you miss mm -hmm. him, how much you love him, because he he shared so much of himself yeah. with us. Yeah. There's so much more where this came from. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Let It Fly podcast. And see you guys again in our next one. Peace. Peace. Brrrr.